Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video today on Halloween, spooky time, um, and also on the eve of the elections in Israel. This is going to be the fifth time, can you believe it, that Israelis have gone to vote for a new government in four years. Who would have thunk it that a country, the only Jewish country in the world, could have so many opinions and so many political parties and so much indecision about who's going to govern them? Anyway, I want to talk about a pretty serious subject tonight, uh, change of tone a bit here, um, and that is mental health. Now, the last time I recorded a video regarding mental health or anything connected to it was in the summer when I talked about the culture of silence among men, and particularly long, among young men when taking SSRIs, and I just made that video, I think it was back in August, lovely sunny day, and I just kind of sat on my roof and recorded a video and I just wanted to say I am a young man I hope 33 is still considered young and I take an SSRI and if I had known other young men in my social circle who were taking SSRIs or antidepressants in more common uh, terminology it would have made a big difference I would have been a lot less scared to get on them so when I made that video I was pretty much saying look if anyone draws an ounce of comfort from this video it was a success now, two, two nights ago, I was watching YouTube because in addition to being a small-time YouTube creator, I'm also an enormous fan of YouTube. I probably spend two, a good two hours per day watching YouTube videos, cooking videos, cockpit videos, as in aviation videos are my favorites, but I watch documentaries. I watch everything on YouTube. And I came across this video on my homepage from a lady called Hannah Chung, and uh, she posted a two-year update about being on Lexapro. And I decided to watch it because I've been on Lexapro for going on a year myself. 20 milligrams, as you can see here in the uh, packaging that I'm holding up to the camera here. Minus the Hebrew and Arabic script. It probably looks pretty much the same wherever you go in the world. And Han is one of those people who, you know, when I was... Right now, I, might, I just clicked into it because I'm like, oh, Lexapro. I take Lexapro. I'll watch this video. But when... When I was looking at taking Lexapro and I was at a point of absolute fear and terror of the possibility of taking an SSRI, videos like the one Hannah put up made all the difference. It literally gave me the courage to start taking psychotropic medication for the first time in my life. And by the way, every time I sit down to record a video about anything related to depression or anxiety or mental health or an SSRI, there's a very strong voice in my head saying, don't do it, Daniel. You know, don't, no one needs to know this. And as I've explained before, the, as I've explained before, the reason I do occasionally upload videos like this is because, you know, I can tell you that when I was at my lowest point, videos like this were what got me over the line and said, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to, to see a, uh, you know, to be on mental health medication. It's very normal. One in 10 people, I believe in the US are on an antidepressant. 10%. It's not uncommon. If you go into a subway on a random day and there's more than 10 people in the queue, one of those people is taking an SSRI in all probability. So um, in any event, I did want to say something a little bit more specific than just these opening remarks in this video. Something Hannah said in her video was um, that she kind of torments herself with these thoughts about do I still need to be on an SSRI medication and I wrote a couple of comments I don't know if she's ever going to see them or respond to them but I wanted to sort of say them anyway to whoever might watch this video something Hannah said was you know she's been two years on Lexapro it's been life-changing and she can look back upon the life-changing journey that she's bought, been on and see how much has helped her but every time and you know that she whatever time she takes her medication she says I have an app on my phone called MediSafe and it literally has a sound effect that goes like this, like shaking a pillbox and you get that notification and there must be a thought for millions of people who say, do I need to take this medication? Now, per the disclaimer that I'm going to add at the start of this video, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psycho psychologist, I'm not any kind of mental health professional, this is purely the perspective of a patient but I did want to throw my own experience into the kind of debate or conversation about this, so to speak. And the point I want to make is as follows. My journey to mental health was a bit circuitous. Um, I first went to a psychiatrist because I found that uh, it's, it's kind of a weird story. But if you want to hear it again or if you haven't heard it before, here it is. 
I had gallbladder surgery. Not many people's mental health story starts with gallbladder surgery, but mine did. And uh, I had a lot of stomach problems afterwards. And I was trying to get to the bottom of, you know, how to feel better. And I was looking at everything on my diet. And one of the first things I said was I drink a hell of a lot of coffee. And when I delved into why I was drinking coffee, I realized it was kind of beyond um, the reason that most people drink coffee. You know, most people drink coffee because they need a bit of a boost. They feel a bit better taking coffee. And I realized that for me, it had taken the place of, uh, it was something beyond that. I couldn't stop drinking coffee, not beyond the kind of, you know, withdrawal period and you get through some headaches and you kind of get off coffee. For me, it was way, way, way beyond that. It was like, can't live without coffee. I can't summon up the motivation without coffee. I can't focus without coffee. So I put this into Google and I think a couple of searches led me to ADHD. Very, very common for people with attention uh, deficit hyperactivity disorder, especially adults, to self-medicate with stimulants, including coffee. Caffeine's probably the only stimulant that you can get over the counter. So I went to a psychiatrist and said, look, I need to clean up my diet. I need to get rid of, I'm drinking so much coffee and I know it's there's some reason for it. Is there any chance I might have ADHD? Psychiatrist said, uh, maybe. Do you want to try an SSRI or do you want to try a stimulant? And I, I'm actually not kidding. That was literally how the conversation went down. It was like red pill, blue pill and the matrix. Everyone's seen the matrix, right? So I went for the blue pill. I went for the, S I went for the stimulant. I went for Ritalin. I took the ADHD diagnosis and probably two or three months after taking Ritalin, I was at the lowest point I've ever been. I was literally my dips in my depression. I'd gone from being kind of moderate dips with my daily coffee habit to very, very far down, just to say that. So um, I went back to a new doctor because this guy retired, the first guy I saw. And he said, you know what? You have ADHD, but if you want to continue with treatment, you're going to have to start an SSRI because what this drug has done to you is not okay. And, you know, you, it could be dangerous. You could be suicidal, etc. So I started an, S an SSRI and I felt amazing. Unfortunately, I, when I was able to go back on ADHD medication, Vyvanse, after a few months, I was convinced that Vyvanse was the answer. Vyvanse was amazing. I was like, I can do anything on Vyvanse. So I said, what's this SSRI? I don't need this SSRI. It's, it, it's doing nothing. All I needed was Vyvanse. I just needed this other stimulant drug and it all works. And you can probably guess how the story ends. I hit again another another horrible, horrible. It actually scares me. The, the hairs on the back of my neck stick up thinking about this low point, how bad it was. When I just when I came off five ants and I told my doctor that's it I'm done, um I'm I'm not taking um Zoloft anymore sorry Zoloft I get all these drugs mixed up, so long story short after all this I went back to my psychiatrist we tried one more drug which is Wellbutrin which is a drug typically given it's kind of an off label depression drug not SSRIs it's got very stimulate stimulating properties. And the exact same thing happened to get, happened again. I was convinced this was the answer. I was amazing. I didn't need coffee. I had all the energy. And then my depression got just as bad as it was on Vyvanse. So I finally went back to my psychiatrist. And I said, I'm done with stimulants. We've tried five different stimulant medications. They've all had the same effect. I feel amazing then I feel terrible. And the only thing that's actually helped me consistently has been an SSRI. Can I go back on an SSRI? So the psychiatrist said, no problem. We'll put you back on an SSRI. I don't know if this is how it's supposed to be, but this is how it happened for me anyway. Now, the point of all this story that I'm kind of building up to is as follows. What I told my psychiatrist is what I'm going to tell you. When I was on a the various stimulants I was on, Vyvanse, Ritalin, uh, Wellbutrin, I put in the same category subjectively I felt amazing objectively my my wife who I live with who sees me more than any other person didn't say I was going crazy but she was like I could see it was not good for you it was exacerbating all your kind of slightly obsessive tendencies and it was just not a good medication for you and I said to my wife Hannah 
I feel of all the drugs I've tried that I was the nicest person, the best person, the most compassionate person, the most sociable person, the most relaxed person, the most happy person on an SSRI. And she said, yep, that would be my opinion too. So what I would say, Hannah, and I'm the other Hannah, not my wife, Hannah, the Hannah, the, <laughs> the YouTube Hannah I mentioned at the start of this video to draw it all back to this. She kind of beats herself up. She says, you know, I've been on Lexapro for two years. It's been a game changer. And she has this daily moment where she says, do I need to be on it? And what my experience has taught me is that I am a very, very bad judge of how much an SSRI helps me. I overestimated to a crazy degree how much stimulants were helping me i thought stimulants were unlocking all my latent potential and that's all i needed and they were really not that actually really not helping me and ssri was keeping everything together and i said and i mistook that for vivance and said i don't need it so when you go to a psychiatrist and they ask questions like what does your wife think of your behavior or what does your husband think of your behavior what do your coworkers think your behavior? There's a reason that's a common line of questioning when you're talking to a psychiatrist, and that's because our sub as psychiatric patients, whether you have anxiety, depression, ADHD, bipolar, schizophrenia, whatever mental health problem you have, it's not a good idea to trust upon your subjective perception of how a medication's affecting you. The, the the process that seems to work for most psychiatrists is some combination of here's your subjective the patient's estimation here's an objective estimation from the from the people close to the patient and the composite of those two perceptions is a good estimation of how this drug is actually affecting the patient so what i said to hannah i don't know if she's ever going to read my comments or my comments on her video was you know i completely empathize with where she is because I'm one year on Lexapro and I have these daily thoughts of do I need to be taking this pill is it time to get off it I can imagine after two years those thoughts only become louder but I have a periodic reminder two things I remember the fact that how grossly I underestimated how much my SSRI was helping me when I chose to come off it foolishly and went back on it then I remember how much I overestimated the extent to which stimulants were helping me. Um, and finally, I guess, if something is helping you, if you can accept that finally, that you know your brain might need a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor to trick the brain to keeping the serotonin around, to boosting the serotonin. And we know that depression isn't actually cured by serotonin. It's, it's that the serotonin hypothesis has been sort of debunked and it seems like it's some downstream effect the truth is no one really understands the brain but when i think about the kind of negative neg negatives that come as being on an ssri you know perhaps you're experiencing weight gain perhaps you're experiencing experiencing sexual dysfunction perhaps you're a bit more tired those are things that people rarely forget about but what people commonly forget about is the risks and the experience of not being an, on an ssri of not being on medication if you have depression. The very real risk of uh, your depression ending in uh, suicide, God forbid, or a suicidal attempt, God forbid, or on a less dramatic note, just maybe loss of employment and general day-to-day -day misery, something more like uh, dysthemia, persistent depressive disorder, which was more my depression. It was a very, very low level, but very, very sticky depression that kind of didn't budge and occasionally i'm pretty good about taking my lexapro on time i attribute that to keeping a pill dispenser on my desk and i also use a great app called medisafe which i highly recommend everyone take your medication and install this app on their phone it's free and it gives you daily reminders there is a sound effect like this of a pill box shaking of when to take your medication so i think i rarely I don't think I've ever forgotten on almost a year to take my Lexapro, which is pretty good if I can toot my own horn. Um, a few times I have taken it late due to not bringing my Lexapro with me, staying out late at a concert, whatever, life happens. And I have noticed if I'm more than six hours late taking my Lexapro, 
I can hear that voice in my head, not literally a voice in my head, but uh, that kind of th that kind of thinking pattern of negativity, of you're not good enough, of low self-esteem, blah, blah, blah. I can subtly feel it coming back to the fore of my consciousness. And um, that's when I realize that's, that always wakes me up. It says, okay, this is a reminder that you still need this SSRI. And by the way, one last point, because I realize I've been talking for 15 minutes. Now I'm going to wrap up this blog post. Some of the content I really enjoy on YouTube, I try to keep up with different psychiatric channels talking about, you know, uh, research into um, psychiatric illness or mental illness and that kind of thing. And there's a few great lectures I've watched. One of them that really caught my interest, it was talking about brain scans of depressed patients, untreated depressed patients, treated depressed patients and controls. And something I find fascinating was that when they looked at the brain scans of um, treated depressed patients versus untreated depressed patients, they found a lot of similarities. Don't ask me for the link, or if you do, I'll dig through my YouTube history and find it. But the um, what the kind of finding of that neuroimaging was, was that basically when you're a treated depressed patient, don't be tricked into thinking you're fixed. Your brain is prime, is still very much primed to relapse into depression. And the fact that you're staying out of depression is thanks to the tremendous advances of psychiatry. With less you need a reminder, the first psychotropic, psychotropic medication, Thorazine, only came onto the market in the 1950s. Before that, if you were a schizophrenic or severely depressed or severely anxious, you got thrown into a mental asylum and I, I, I say this not to scaremonger but rather to say this stop for a moment and appreciate the advancements in psychiatry that have been necessary to just get to the point that you could take a pill every day and have your anxiety or your OCD or your depression controlled yes we haven't got to the point where there's some kind of a magic pill we can take that'll forever vanquish our depression anxiety or OCD but this is the best we have right now and I think my final comment to Hannah and this is what I'll end the video with was I'm waiting for that magic pill or for that magic perhaps TMS or for psychedelic therapy to advance some kind of reliable and safe intervention that will take place that will permanently and definitely cure depression and anxiety until then I think I would be insane to stop taking this medication only because I didn't like the fact that I have to take a pill every day to uh, to feel good. You know what? I have I have asthma. Here's my asthma inhaler. It just happened to be on my desk now. I don't love the fact that I have to take this thing every day to breathe, but it is what it is. I don't think about it anymore. And that's very much after one year on Lexapro. That's kind of the way I'm starting to think about Lexapro. Keep one in your pocket, pop a pill, buy one of those pill holders from AliExpress or from eBay or from Amazon, have a spare pill, put it on your keys, keep one in your car. Just don't, so just so it's a no-brainer, you always have it. Put a reminder on your phone in MetaSafe that you have to take it at a certain time and try to take it within, either on time or within an hour of the alert going off. And versus being untreated, depressed and miserable and horrible and spiraling and potentially god forbid feeling suicidal from time to time or increasingly so it's a good trade-off even though there are side effects i won't go on anymore i hope i've got some cogent points across in this very stream of uh stream of train of thought consciousness thank you guys for watching periodically there will be videos like this popping up on this youtube channel so if you do want to get more now and again do stick around and uh wishing everyone struggling everyone out there struggling with any mental illness whether it's depression anxiety adhd bipolar schizophrenia success and please just as a patient not as a doctor don't beat yourself up over the need to take daily medication because there is enough beating up going on without you adding to it for no reason and it's a blessing that in the year 2022 we have effective albeit imperfect drugs available for treatment and don't spit in the face of science really it's taken all this time to get here use every advantage you can get including medications like these
Thank you guys for watching. Have a great one and uh, stick around if you want to get more videos.